Buffalo Bill Jr. Buffalo Bill Jr. Buffalo Bill Jr. With his little sister, Calamity. Buffalo Bill Jr. brings you exciting action. Thrills and fun Whoa. with Judge Ben Fair and Square, Wiley. Buffalo Bill. But it's just the way the judge wants it, and it's no sillier than Caleb's. Dixieland Acres. No hunting, no fishing, no Yankees. Absolutely. Captain, uh, Major Caleb Boomer, CSA. The Civil War ended long before we were born. You'd think the judge and Mr. Boomer would stop fighting it. Oh, they like fighting. It's what keeps them feeling young. You know they really like each other. I know the judge did feel awful sorry for Caleb when his wife was sick for so long. Yeah, and when she died, he was sure hard-pressed for money. That's why the judge paid him so much for this half of the farm, just to help him out. If the judge heard you say that, he'd have a fit. <laughs> you know, sometimes I think he enjoys having a fit, especially when Caleb's around. You know, you sure have pretty hair. Let's you may get back to the store. Caleb, you already did your shopping for this week. What do you want of me now? I ain't asking any favors of you. You know that 80 acres of land I sold you a few weeks ago? Yeah. Well, uh, I want to buy it back. Say, what is this? Another one of your Johnny Reb tricks? Now, you all listen to me, Van Wiley. The only reason you bought that land was because you thought that I was temporarily out of cash. Well, I ain't been beholden to no man, you hear? Especially a concerned, confounded Yankee. Well, for your information, Captain Boomer, this confounded Yankee bought that 80 acres, not to help you out, but just so young Bill and his sister would have something that they could own when they got grown up. And you or nobody else is walking in here and making me sell. But it's my land. I've owned it for most 20 years. Well, you don't own it now. Now, stop bothering me. I'm busy, and I definitely am not selling. Bull-headed Yankee! <laughs> It's a good thing neither one of you are Caleb Boomer. What's the matter? You beat him at checkers again? The next time I beat him, it'll be over the head with this. The nerve of some people. Oh, an accident. Now, listen, I... You I'm... are going back in there, Mr. Boomer. Go with him this time, Jono. Make sure he brings back the deed to the 80 acres. But I... And don't forget, I'll be watching. Just because we've been friends for 40 years and he's going to talk me out of that place, he... If you come back in here thinking you can talk me out of them 80 acres, I'm warning you. You better get out of here while it's still healthy for you. Now, Ben, if you'd only listen, I just gotta have that land back. I I'll even pay you a profit. A profit? The only way you'll pay me a profit is if it's some crooked scheme. Why, you ox-headed, cantankerous old fool? Who do you think you're calling a crook, huh? Oh, you did the... Give me that baby. No, no, Joe, just be gentle now. By gilded glory, you get out of this store, and don't ever let me see you come in here again. Well, you won't try to put me out. Go on, try to put me out. Go on, uh, just a minute, mister. The name ain't mister. It's judge, and if you're gonna put in your two bits worth, you're gonna find yourself locked up in the calaboose for impeding justice. Is that so? Yes, that's so. And if I was you, I'd start making tracks out of here before I hold you both for trespassing, malicious mischief, and vagrancy. All you're going to do, Judge, is listen to this man and be a gentleman. Excuse me. I distinctly heard the judge ask you to leave. Well, I'm not going to be.
I distinctly heard the judge tell you to leave. And under the circumstances, Mr. Boomer, I think you better leave, too. Now, vamoose. You were real swell, honey. Keep on acting the way you are, and you'll be needing this. to see why we had Boomer try to buy that land back. Now let him look. He won't find anything. Well, just the same. You two go up where we found those ore samples. Make blame sure everything is covered up. Okay. What are you going to do? I'm going to take care of this assay report. All we need is for Boomer or Wiley to find out how much that ore is really worth. Come on, Jano. Judge, you know, there's nothing wrong with Mr. Boomer wanting to buy back his 80 acres. Yeah, but there's something wrong when he comes in here with a gunfighter for a bodyguard. Here, what are you doing? I'll take care of this. I'll stack this. Hey, hey, where do you two think you're going? I just thought we'd ride out and see that your 80 acres hasn't seceded to the Confederacy. Well, thanks, Bill. That's a good idea. No, but if we get him to talking, maybe we can patch up his fight with the judge. Who knows, when you put two and two together, you... What's wrong, Bill? Up there in the rocks. See those two men? Gosh, Bill, who are they? And what are they doing? I don't know from here, but let's find out. Let's go. Now, I ain't gonna warn you no more, my Chris. You get off my land or I'm gonna feel you so full of buckshot, you all look like a lace curtain. I'll have the law on you for this. You're five months late now on your mortgage interest. Scat, get, that moves. Or they're gonna use that mortgage of yours for a shroud to bury in. Now, put that thing away, Caleb, and let's talk this over like sensible businessmen. Businessman? Why, you're worse than hell. Why, I'll stick Hold on there. Now, Mr. Boomer, easy now. What brought all this on, Mr. West? He's a thief and a crook and a low-down no-good. Oh, I wouldn't say Mr. West is all of those things. But just to keep the peace, Mr. West, until all this blows over, maybe you had better leave, huh? Well, all right. Come on, Mr. Boomer. I want to thank you all for what you've done for me. I'm telling you, children, I'm so worried lately, I don't know what I'm doing. If the judges only sell me back my land. But why do you need the land so badly, Mr. Boomer? Well, I gotta sell this place before that scout from my grace forecloses and takes it away from me. You need the judges' 80 acres to sell your own place? I know it sounds kind of crazy, but some fellas want to buy it at a good price, too, to use it as a feedlot for cattle. But they say without the other 80 acres, this place ain't worth buying alone. The whole place isn't worth anything for feeding. But if they want both places so bad, why don't they make you an offer and the judge a separate one? That's what I said to them, but they said no. They said, if a stranger went to the judge, he might get suspicious. How much money would it take to bring you up on your mortgage? About four or five hundred dollars, I reckon. Mr. Boomer, 
I've got an idea that'll maybe save your land, and you'll end up with money in the bank. Calamity, you head back to town, but don't say a word of this to the judge. But, Bill, Mr. Boomer needs money. Calamity, honey, just this one time. Do as I ask you. Maybe everything will turn out better than we think. Don't you worry, Mr. Boomer. you got an explanation for this. Come out of there. And it better be mighty good, or I'm liable to give you 20 years for bank robbery. Oh, you can't do that, Judge. And why not? First, because I'm a girl. Second, well, I didn't rob the bank for myself. The defendant may explain in her own words. Well, I'm really not supposed to tell you, Judge. 20 years for bank robbery and an extra 10 for contempt of court. Well, I was just trying to help poor Mr. Boomer. He needs money something awful. Caleb needs money? How do you know? Well, we saw Mr. West at his ranch, trying to close the mortgage in four places. You mean foreclosing the mortgage on his ranch? Or whatever you do with him. Why, that iron-headed, weak-kneed ignoramus. If he needed money, why didn't he tell me? What are friends for, anyway? You all run me out of your store once, and now I'm running you off my land. Now you did, uh, by the bold of Robert E. Lee, they're gonna bury you right here. Why, you lopsided specimen of uh, Andaluvian fossil, I rode all the way out here just to help you, like a friend. A friend? No overgrown walleye Yankee's a friend of mine. Now you won't dig, or I'll blow daylight plumb through you. <laughs> I think I found out why Mr. Bellamy wants to buy Mr. Boomer's place and the judge's 80 acres. You did, Bill? Why? Well, I'm not sure, but I think they found some kind of ore up there. Oh, gold? You mean real gold? Well, I don't know what it is yet, but it came from the place we saw those two men today. Then what are we going to do, Bill? Well, somebody must know what it is. That's why I hurried back to see the judge. Do you think the judge knows about ore? Maybe. I'll bet Mr. Bellamy does, and I think I know how we can find out for sure. Me too, you mean? Mm-hmm. I mean, it's taking a lot of chances, but you got a lot of spunk for a girl. But if you do as I say, no one's gonna get hurt, unless maybe it's me. Where are we going? Down that old deserted ranger's cabin, at Oak Flats. That's where Mr. Bellamy and his two bodyguards are hiding up. And that's where we'll find the answers to a lot of questions. Let's go. Keep that up, Bellamy, and you'll have your toes thick and clean out of your boots. Sit down. Take it easy. Sure. Take it easy. That's all you two ever do. If you'd let Curly and me handle it our way, things would have been a little different. Sure. Your way. Real smart. Bump off both the old geezers, and then their estates would be tied up for years. You know if we don't sign that lease within 48 hours, we lose the whole deal. 
Yeah, we know, we know. Only I'm getting sick and tired of sitting around here for hours waiting for you to think up something. Well, I've decided. I'll go into town and see that judge. I'll deal with him direct. Ha, big brain, ain't you? That's what Curly told you yesterday, you fat-headed idiot. Why, you... Take it easy, Melby. Now get into town. Don't come back till you got it sewed up. And if you don't get that, D, don't bother showing your early face around here again. <laughs> that was too close for comfort. Well, what do we do now, Bill? Come on, I'll show you. Up? He wouldn't dare. We'll be living like kings. Dallas, and San Francisco, maybe even Chicago. Yeah, that's right. And if we're real smart and get rid of Bellamy, we should have enough to last us the rest of our lives. How'd you get in here? Through the window. It was open. Only I tripped, trying to get back out again. What'd you come here for, anyway? To be lookout for my brother while he's searching the bedroom. Quit lying now. No one was in the bedroom or we'd have heard him. Oh, no? Well, you wouldn't have known I was here if I hadn't have tripped. Uh, I don't believe her, Jono. Well, you don't have to. You can find out for yourselves. Find out? What do you mean? Well. Look in the bedroom and see if anything's missing. I'll do just that. Keep your eye on her, Curly. I'll be right back. Mm. I want to see that paper. North America. Oh. Come on, Carl. We got a guy.
Come here, Calamity, and give me a hand. This court finds you guilty of stealing ore samples off of my land and off of Caleb's land. And then you tried to sell the mineral rights to American Tungsten. Instead of holding me, you ought to pay us a percentage for finding Tungsten on your place. Well, maybe I will give you a percentage. The next 50% of your life will be spent at the state's expense, right in the brand new penitentiary. Bill. Well, Caleb, you've got no money worries no more. Yeah, I guess that's right. But then neither do you. Oh, I don't worry about money. Oh. I suppose I'm the only one who died. Now, Caleb, stop trying to start another argument again. Who's arguing? You just had the audacity to say that all I do is go around worrying over money. I said no such thing. Yes, you did. Now you call me an out and out liar, you blithering bumptious Yankee. Yeah! You can't insult me right here in my own court. Well, you just called me a liar. Well, I'll call you worse than that if you don't start making tracks out of well, here. Well, you all think you can put me out, you just go ahead and well, talk. Well, maybe I yeah. will. Uh, just as soon as I beat you two out of three playing checkers. <laughs> <laughs> now, Caleb, just ease down. Yeah. That tungsten mine's liable to make millionaires out of us. Then we'll really have something to worry about. Ooh. Your move. Well, let me see. Uh-uh-uh-uh. You beat already. <laughs> Buffalo Bill Jr. Now with his horse and with his gun, he's not afraid of anyone. Cause no one's quicker on the draw or quicker to defend the law. Buffalo Bill Jr. Buffalo Bill Jr. He's the son of a son of a gun. Buffalo Bill, Buffalo Bill, Buffalo Bill, Buffalo Bill, Buffalo Bill Jr. 